Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I'm here today with a special edition baseball game, which is going to be a tribute game to the late Tim Wakefield. Um, if you don't know, he passed away this uh, past weekend of, uh, I believe, brain cancer. And he was the same age that I am, so it's a little scary there. But anyway, uh, we're going to have a uh, tribute game to Mr. Tim Wakefield, the knuckleballer. Uh, Tim Wakefield in his career um, pitched 19 seasons, most of them for Boston, although I think he did pitch two seasons for Pittsburgh. He had a 200 and 180 lifetime record with a 441 earned run average in 3,226 innings of work. And this particular game is going to be um, a game where he had one of his better years. It's going to be between two teams, um, he, one of the Boston teams that um, had a good year and one of his best years of his career, 1995 with the Boston Red Sox. In 1995, he had a record of 16 and eight and a 295 earned run average and 195 innings pitched. And they will be taking on the 1995 New York Yan Yankees. Now, the Yankees in 1995, I believe won 79 games and the Red Sox won 86 games. So this will be a Pretty good matchup here. And uh, pitching for the New York Yankees will be Sterling Hitchcock. So we will go over the New York Yankees lineup since they are going to be the visiting team. We are in Fenway. The um, uh, weather effects are for a single. It's um, 1 to 18 for lefties and righties in Fenway. And for home runs, it's 1 to 4 for lefties and righties. Uh, the uh, lineup for the Yankees will start off with Bernie Williams playing center field. The second batter will be Derek Jeter, the shortstop. Batting third will be Wade Boggs, and he'll be the third baseman today. Batting fourth will be Ruben High Sierra, and he is going to be in right field for the Yankees. Batting in the fifth spot will be Don Mattingly, and he'll play first base. Then Paul O'Neill is going to be the left fielder today for the Yankees. Randy Velarde will bat seventh and be the DH. Mike Stanley will bat in the eighth spot and be the catcher. And at second base, they will have Pat Kelly batting ninth. So we're going to get on with the game. I believe that's, um, and again, this is, this is not a uh, scoreboard. It's an out. It's a uh, you know marker to show you where we are in the game. Uh, so you know you can see right now it's in the top of the first, and so that's where we are with Bernie Williams. And Bernie Williams gets a three ten. He is a switch hitter batting against um, Wakefield, so he would be batting left. And that is a ballpark single, and that is going to be a hit. So, uh, Bernie Williams gets aboard with a single off of Mr. Wakefield. Now, we will pitch Wakefield as long as we can. This is his tribute game. Uh, but we don't want to keep him out there if he tends to get, you know, overwhelmed by the Yankee lineup. Derek Jeter is the next batter. He gets a 6-3, and he is... Uh, Right-hand batter, and that is also going to be a ballpark single. So um, they have two runners on very quickly here, the Yankees do, um, against Wakefield. And uh, that knuckleball is not fooling anybody so far. Wade Boggs is up. He gets a 4-2. He's a left-handed batter. And unfortunately, that's a walk, and Wakefield has loaded the bases in his tribute game. Not, not the best way to go about everything, but that's how it is. Uh, so the, the bases are loaded for the Yankees with nobody out. And Ruben High Sierra gets a 5'11", and he will be batting left. 
And uh, 511 is a ground ball to the first baseman. That is going to be Mo Vaughn. And he is a 4E13. That is a 3. So I'm not liking the chances here. 3 and a 4 is going to be a single double asterisk. And two runs come in um, on the uh, base hit by Sierra. So this is not a good this is not a good way to start off your tribute game. <laughs> I mean, really, um, Wakefield gives up his third hit and three earned runs, and Don Mattingly is the batter. And um, with that single, um, let's see, it's runners at the corners for the Yankees with nobody out. Mattingly up, and he gets a 5-8. Five, 5-8, eight. Five, eight, he's a left-handed batter, and that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for the Red Sox is a 3-E-20, and that is a 9. So let's see what that gets us. That's going to get us um, on the uh, error rating. And a 9 on a 20 is going to be a ground ball double play. So the second baseman does make the double play, but a run scores on it. There's two out. Mattingly hitting into the fielder's choice and the uh, DP. And... Um, but Boggs scores on it, and it's 3 nothing Yankees. And Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill gets a 6-6. Six, six. He is a left-handed batter. And uh, that is going to be a fly ball to center field. So the F8 ends uh, a pretty big inning for the Yankees as they scored three runs um, on, uh, on three hits. And lead 3-0 as we go to the bottom of the first inning. John Valentin, and I'll go over the Red Sox lineup. John Valentin is the leadoff hitter. He is the shortstop today. Batting second will be Troy O'Leary. He'll be in right field. Batting third is the Gator, Mike Greenwell. Batting in the cleanup spot will be Jose Canseco, and he is the DH. The fifth batter is Mo Vaughn. He's the first baseman today. Followed by Tim Naring in the sixth spot and playing third base. Then Lee Tinsley is the center fielder. Mike McFarlane in the eighth spot at catcher. And Luis Alisea at second base. And Sterling Hitchcock is the pitcher for the Yankees. As I said, that's a 4-12. Valentin is a right-handed batter. And that is going to be a ballpark home run, which is going to result in a fly ball to center. One down and Troy O'Leary up. Troy O'Leary gets a 1-5 um, against Hitchcock, who is a lefty. That is a single. So uh, Hitchcock gives up a single. There's a man on with one down and Mike Greenwell. The Gator, the Gator gets a 3-4, and that's going to be a walk. So the Red Sox are mounting their own little rally here. As Hitchcock walks a man and allows two of the first three batters he's faced to get on board with Canseco as the batter, and that's a 5-8. He is a right-handed batter, and that is going to be a strikeout. So Canseco with the K, and that's the first strikeout of the game. Hitchcock doing it to Canseco, which is not surprising. Mo Vaughn, left-hander Mo Vaughn, gets a 6-8. And uh, that is going to be a walk. And so the Red Sox have also now loaded up the bases. 
with only one out, I believe. So one down and no, two outs. There is two outs. And um, the bases are loaded for Tim Naring. And he gets a 4-7 right-handed batter, and that is going to be a single and drives in one run. And that would be Troy O'Leary in the person of Troy O'Leary. So Boston does strike and get a run. And that brings to the plate Lee Tinsley. Lee Tinsley, 6'8", switch hitter, is going to bat right, and that is going to result in a strikeout. So Hitchcock strikes out the second man of the inning, um, and that is going to be it for Boston in the first inning. We're going to the top of the second, and uh, the score is 3-1 to one Yankees with Randy Velarde. The batter for the Yankees. He gets a 5-2 batting right. And that is going to be, unfortunately, a home run. Randy Velarde uncorks a homer. And, uh, yeah, this is not the kind of uh, tribute game that uh, I'm sure Mr. Wakefield would have hoped for. And Mike Stanley is a batter. Mike Stanley gets a 2-7, and that's going to be a walk. My God, this is really, uh, this is really bad. Pat Kelly is the batter. Man on, uh, nobody out, and that's a 6-7. 6-7 is going to be a line out to third base, one away. One down, man at first, Bernie Williams is up. He gets a 6-9, six, 6-9, nine. Six, nine, and he is batting left, and that's going to be a walk. This is crazy. How did... I, I I have no idea how Wakefield had such a good year, but yet uh, on this card in this game against the Yankees, who weren't that great, he's just not pitching well at all. Derek Jeter is the batter. He gets a 2-4, and uh, that is going to be a walk to load the bases with only one down. So... Um, Stanley moves to third, Williams moves to second, and um, then you got Jeter on first with Wade Boggs up, and that is a 1-5, um, and that's going to be a, a double, doubles in two runs, Boggs does. And that would be... Um, Stanley and Williams come around. So we've got three, four, five, six. Yeah. And Ruben High Sierra is up. There's only one out. And he gets a 110 against a righty. That's a strikeout. So that's the first uh, K of the game for Wakefield. And with two down, brings up Don Mattingly. And he gets a 610. 610 is going to be a fly ball to center field. The center fielder for the Red Sox is a 3-E-10. That is a 6. Let's see what that gets him. Uh, 
six, right? Yeah, six, and he's a three, and that is going to be a single double asterisk and knock in two runs. This is crazy bad. So that knocks in, um, yeah, that knocks in Jeter and Boggs. Wakefield allowing a sixth hit and a uh, an eighth run. <laughs> wow. And Paul O'Neill is up. Paul O'Neill gets a 2-3, and that is going to be a ground ball first base. And that is going to be the end of the inning. Uh, because that is, yes, ground ball first base. But not before the Yankees get, uh, by my count, five more runs. Yep, five more runs, and they take an eight to one lead. As we go to the bottom of the second, this is just the bottom of the second, and it's eight to eight to one Yankees. Mike McFarland is the batter. He gets a two six. Um, against the lefty, that is going to be a double. So Mike McFar, it's a good thing that the Red Sox are at least doing something themselves. But they, they got to do a lot of something to get back into this one. Man at second, nobody out. Luis Alisea gets a 1-8. And a 1-8 against the lefty is going to be a single double asterisk and knock in a run. Luis Alisea with a big hit. And Hitchcock gives up his fourth hit. Second run. That brings to the plate John Valentin. John Valentin gets a 1-5, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop double play. So there's two down. And Troy O'Leary is the batter. And he gets a 6-9 batting uh, left against um, Hitchcock. And that is going to be a strikeout. So Troy O'Leary strikes out. That is the third strikeout for Hitchcock in the game. Boston gets a run, but that's they're going to really need to... Uh, do a little better than that. We're going to the top of the third, and I am going to take Wakefield out because this is just not Wakefield's game. Even though it's his tribute game, it isn't his game. So um, they will be bringing in a relief pitcher. And um, I'm going to go find out who that will be. They are going to bring in Zane Smith. Zane Smith in 1995 was 8-8 eight and eight with a 561 earned run average. He pitched 111 innings, was a starter reliever, so he can pitch a lot of innings here. Coming on in relief of Wakefield. So you've got uh, Zane Smith. And we're going to close the book on Wakefield. I've got him going... Two innings, allowing six hits, eight earned runs, striking out only one and walking four. And um, that's going to bring Velarde up. Velarde is going to be the leadoff batter for the Yankees here in the top of the third. He gets a 3-12, and yeah, I'm not going to quit my uh, day job. 3-12, uh, Zane Smith is a lefty, so that is going to be a walk. The Yankees are just relentless here. I mean, they are just absolutely relentless. Zane Smith, the first guy he faces, he walks him. Mike Stanley is up. He gets a 2-7, and that is going to be a walk as well. This is crazy. I have never, I, I, I just, I don't know. I got, I've got no words here. Um, so Zane Smith walks the second guy he faces, 
and uh, Pat Kelly is up. Pat Kelly gets a 4-7. He is a righty. That's going to be a single double asterisk. Are you kidding me? All right, so <laughs> Pat Kelly with a single. That knocks in Velarde. It moves Stanley over to third. There are still no outs. Um, Zane Smith gives up his first hit right there. And um, and one, one run already. Bernie Williams. Uh, Bernie Williams gets a 4-7. And he is going to be batting uh, right against Zane Smith. And that's going to be a single double asterisk. Man, this game is never going to end. So um, Stanley comes in to score. Kelly goes to third. A hit and another run. And um, now runners are at the corners with um, nobody out. And Derek Jeter, and he gets a two. What is that, a two-three? That is a two-three. Um, and he is batting against the lefty. And that is going to be a ground ball shortstop B. So the run scores, and there's one out, and now Jeter is the man at first. And Pat Kelly is the guy that scored on that. And Wade Boggs is up. Wade Boggs gets a 6-7. And that is going to be um, a... He's batting against a lefty. He is a left-handed batter. It's a strikeout. Two away. So Boggs with the K, Smith strikes out uh, his first batter, and Ruben Sierra gets a 111, and batting against the lefty, that is going to be a ground ball B, so he's out. Ground ball to the pitcher, so it's 1-3. to three. And the Yankees even managed three more runs right there. And they are, this is an avalanche of runs that is just crazy. It is 11 to 2. The Yankees are leading 11 to 2 as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Mike Greenwell, the Gator, is up. He gets a 5 8. He's a left handed batter. And that is going to be a strikeout. And Hitchcock strikes out his fourth guy. Jose Canseco is up. He gets a 6-7. He is a right-handed batter, and that is going to be a walk. And uh, that is the second walk that Hitchcock has issued. Mo Vaughn is up. He gets a 1-5. That is going to be a um, that's going to be a single. And it's a one base single, mandatory one base single. So um, Canseco goes to second. Hitchcock giving up his fifth hit. Tim Naring is up. That is a 5-9, five, 5-9 nine. Five, nine for our right-handed batter. That's going to be a fly ball center field. So there is two outs, actually, on there. And Lee Tinsley is the batter. And that is a 4-7. And he is going to be batting right. And that is going to be a single to load the bases. So Tinsley, I believe, got his... No, he struck out last time. So Canseco goes to third. Um, Vaughn goes to second. And, um, yeah, and Tinsley is on first. 
So that brings it, that puts it all in the lap of Mike McFarland. And he gets a 1 9, and against the lefty, that is going to be a strikeout. He had a double last time, but he strikes out this time. Fifth strikeout for Hitchcock. No runs come in for the Red Sox there in the third inning. And we are going in the bottom of the third inning, and so we are going to the top of the fourth. Top of the fourth with Don Mattingly up against Zane Smith. Um, he gets a 4-7 left-handed batter. That is going to be a single. Third hit allowed by Smith, Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill gets a 1-9. That is going to be a fly ball center field, one away. Randy Velarde is up. And he gets a 3-6, and that's going to be a single. And the Yankees, they're not going to be going crazy here. They're going station to station. I mean, they already have 11 runs. So Mike Stanley is up, and he gets a 5-4. Five, 5-4, four, five, four, righty. Um, and that's going to be a center field X. Or wait a minute. It, um, yeah. Yeah. Center field X, he is a 3E10, as we said. That's an 8. 8 and 3 is a fly ball C. There's two outs. And that brings up Pat Kelly. Pat Kelly gets a 3-8. Um, and batting against a lefty. That is a walk to load the bases again. The Yankees have loaded the bases again. It's a common theme going on here. So Mattingly moves to third. Velarde up to second. And Bernie Williams, the leadoff batter, is up. He gets a 6-6. Six, six. He would be batting right against Zane Smith. And that is going to be a... Ground ball, first base. Ground out three, and that is the first inning where the Yankees didn't score any runs. We go to the bottom of the fourth with the score still Yankees 11, 5, 8. Yep, Yankees 11, Red Sox 2. Luis Alisea is the batter, the second baseman for the Red Sox. He gets a 6-10. He is uh, batting right. He's a switch hitter. Um, so 6-10 is going to be a ground ball shortstop. Alisea goes out 6-3. One away. John Valentin gets a 6-6. He is a right-handed batter. That is going to be a single. So Valentin works his way aboard. Hitchcock gives up his sixth hit. Troy O'Leary is up. He gets a 3-6. Uh, batting against a lefty, that's going to be a strikeout. Hitchcock striking out his sixth man. Got a lot of strikeouts today. And... Um, Mike Greenwell is up. The Gator. The Gator gets 112, and that is going to be a ground ball second base. So he goes out 4-3. Uh, to three. And no runs come in for Boston. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Top of the fifth, Derek Jeter is up. The captain. He gets a 4-5 against Zane Smith, and that's going to be a ground ball short. One away. He's out 6-3. to three. Wade Boggs is up. 
He gets a 1-6. That is going to be a double. Wade Boggs ripping a double against his old team. Fifth hit already given up by Zane Smith. Ruben High Sierra gets a 1-7 against a lefty. That's going to be a, a fly ball left field B to away. And that brings up Mattingly with two down and a man at second. And he gets a 1-8. And a 1-8 is going to be a double and not in a run. The Yankees scoring yet again. Paul O'Neill gets a 6-4. 6-4, um, and he is a left-handed batter, and that's going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. That's Tim Nairing. Nairing is a 2-E-2. That is a 1, so that looks like it's going to be a base hit. Um, it was a roll of 1, and he's a 2. Yeah, that's a single 1 asterisk. So, O'Neal with the hit moves Mattingly over to third. And let's see, Velarde is up. Let's see if they can get him out. 6 4. And that's going to be a ground ball third base. He is a two. That's a nine. That's okay. So it's going to be on his air rating. He is a 2E2. So you got to believe that's going to be an out, but let's see. 12. Uh, hmm. I guess he's uh, out. I don't see E2 on here. I don't, it starts at E5, so I guess it's an out. We're just going to call it an out. Very easy to do that. He goes 5-3. to three. And no runs come across. Or wait a minute, one run does come across in the fifth for the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the fifth with the score 12-2 um, to two. Yankees. Leading the Red Sox, 1995. Jose Canseco. I tried to pick the best year that Wakefield, one of the better years that Wakefield had, but this Yankee lineup was just on. Um, Canseco is the batter. He gets a 3-9, and that's going to be a strikeout. And that's Hitchcock's seventh strikeout. Amazing. How many did he have? He pitched, let's see. He pitched 168 innings and he struck out 121. Well, that doesn't really warrant how he's been striking people out here. Vaughn is up. Vaughn gets a 5-7. And that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Second baseman for the Yankees is uh, Pat Kelly. And he is a 2E8. That is a 9. Um, yeah, and it's going to be on his air rating. And that is a 7. And that is going to be a ground ball A. So he goes out 4-3. to three. Vaughn does. Which brings up Tim Nary. And that is a 6-10 right-handed batter um, against Hitchcock. And that's going to be a ground ball short, 6-3. No runs come in in the fifth. We're going to the top of the sixth. Um, yeah, um, I mean, Z Smith has pitched three. He could probably pitch another inning. Um 
and in fact, um, I'm going to, well, no, he's pitched three, and that's his inning of weakness in relief. We will take him out. So we're going to take Zane Smith out. He pitches three innings. The book on Smith is three innings, seven hits, three earned runs, a strikeout, and three walks. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't even know if Boston has a good pitcher out here, or at least a pitcher that could keep this Yankee lineup at bay today. Um, we're going to go with uh, Ken Ryan. Ken Ryan, in 1995, only pitched 33 innings. He allowed 34 hits, and he had a 496 earned run average. He is at least a righty, though, so maybe that'll help, because the previous, well, no, Wakefield was a right, so yeah. Um, Ken Ryan. Ken Ryan on to pitch for the Red Sox with Randy Velarde. Um, no, Velarde made the last out, so Stanley is up. Stanley gets 3 7 against a righty, and that's going to be a strikeout. We are in the top of the sixth, so yeah, we want to make sure we record that. Ryan starting off better than the other two did. Pat Kelly gets a 6-6, six, six, and that is going to be a walk. I spoke. Maybe I spoke too soon. Ken Ryan walks the second man he faces. There's one out with a man on, and Bernie Williams back to the top of the lineup, and that is a 5-8. And 5-8 batting. Um, he is going to be batting left, and that is going to be a single to center field. With uh, moving Pat Kelly down to second. Derek Jeter is the batter. He gets a 4-7. Four, 4-7 seven. Four, seven, right-handed batter. And that's going to be a single and load the bases up. Williams going to second. Kelly going to third. Bases are loaded with one out. And Wade Boggs, the batter, and he gets a 4-9. 4-9 um, left-handed batter. That is going to be a single double. These guys are wearing me out. I mean, I'm just getting so sick of tracking this. <laughs> All right, Boggs with a single. Run scores in the form of Pat Kelly and Bernie Williams. And now runners are at the corners. Jeter at third. Boggs at first. Ruben Sierra up. This is going to be an unprecedented run scoring game. I mean, three and two. He is batting against a righty. And that is going to be a fly ball left field B, which scores the run. Uh, sack fly. Scoring Jeter. That's the third run Ryan's allowed. I mean, I couldn't bring any – I literally so far have not been able to bring a Boston pitcher in that's pitched well. Don Mattingly gets a 3-9. 3-9 against a righty, and that is going to be a ground ball second base. So the Yankees get three more there in the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth with the score. Um, what is it? 8, 11, 12, 13, 15 to 2. 15 to 2 when Lee Tinsley is up. He gets a 4 11. He will be batting um, right against Hitchcock, and that's going to be a pop out to short, one away.
That brings up Mike McFarland. He gets a 6-7, and uh, he's going to be batting, well, he is a right-handed batter. Um, that is going to be a walk. So McFarland works a walk. That is the third guy that Hitchcock has walked today. Luis Alisea gets a 4-8. And 4-8, uh, he will be batting righty. And that's a walk. So they got a little something going, but I mean, I think it's probably a little too late for that. Fourth walk allowed by Hitchcock. John Valentin gets a 4-7. Four, 4-7 seven. Four, seven is going to be a single and load the bases. So bases loaded with only one out. And up to the plate is stepping Troy O'Leary, and he gets a 6-4. And he's a left-handed batter. And that is going to be a ballpark single. And it is. It's a single, one base, runners run scores. So O'Leary with a hit, knocking in McFarlane. Hitchcock giving up his eighth hit and third run of the game. And uh, Mike Greenwell is up. He gets a 5-10, batting left. That is going to be a ground ball short. Jeter, at this particular juncture of his career, was a 4-E-24, which is really re kind of what he should have been all of his career. But anyway, he was a 4-E, that's a 4-E-24 and a 16 at short. 16 and 4 is going to be a ground ball C. So a run scores. That is a um, fielder's choice by Greenwell. Which scores um, Alisea. Hitchcock giving up the fourth, his fourth run. And, um, and can say go up. And he gets a 6-10, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop, 6-3. But the Red Sox strike for two there, and now it is, um, what is it, like 11, 12, 13, 15-4. 15-4, Paul O'Neill is up. Um, we're going to keep, um, we're going to keep Ryan out there for the seventh. That is a five, nine. And, uh, he is a left-handed batter. And that's going to be a line out to second base. So O'Neill lines out to four. One away. Randy Velarde gets a 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five is going to be a ground ball shortstop. 6-3. Thank God. I really did not need to see the Yankees score another run. And Mike Stanley is up and he gets a 5-7. Five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven is going to be a strikeout. Ken Ryan with the K there. And uh, we go to the bottom of the seventh. I missed the uh, moving the thing there. But anyway, we are now in the bottom of the seventh. Um, we're going to take out Sterling Hitchcock. So Hitchcock is going to only pitch six. He pitches six innings, allows eight hits, four earned runs, strikes out seven, and walks four. And 
right, let's see who we bring in. Doesn't have to be anybody good. Certainly, they're going to bring in Joe. I've never even heard of this guy, Joe Ossiano. Joe Ossiano in 1995 was 2 0 with a 573 earned run average in 38 innings pitched, and he is a right handed pitcher. And Mo Vaughn is the batter that he will face to start off the bottom of the seventh. And he gets a 1 7, and that is going to be a strikeout. Vaughn strikes out, and let's put in Ossiano. He gets a K on the first batter he faces. Tim Nairing gets a 111. 111 against a righty is a ground ball second base, two away. So four to three. And Lee Tinsley is up. Lee Tinsley with a 5-3. He is a switch hitter, so he will be batting left. And that is a single. So Tinsley has his second hit of the game. Ossiano allows his first hit of the game. And Mike McFarland's up 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five for a righty. Against a righty, and that's going to be a strikeout. To wait a minute. Yes, it is. It's a strikeout. Anyway. So McFarland strikes out. Uh, Ossiano strikes out his second guy. No runs come in for the Red Sox in the seventh. We go to the top of the eighth. And uh, Pat Kelly is the batter. Ken Ryan will come out. So we're going to close the book on Ryan. He goes two, he allows two hits, three earned runs, struck out two, and walked one. And we're going to bring in Joe Hudson for Boston. Joe Hudson was 0-1 with a 4-11 earned run average in 46 innings. And we'll just write him in here. Pat Kelly is the first batter that he'll face. He gets a 3-10. 3-10. And uh, Hudson is a righty. And that's going to be a ground ball short. So 6-3 for Pat Kelly here in the eighth. One away. Bernie Williams gets a 6-2. And he is going to be batting left. And uh, that is going to be a ground ball first base. One away. And that brings up Derek Jeter. And he gets a 5-9. And 5-9 is going to be a strikeout. So very good inning for, um, for Mr. Hudson. And no runs come in for the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth, the Bobo is up. Luis Elisea batting against Ossiano on for his second inning of work. And we will just re-roll. 6-8. <laughs> 6-8. Uh, six, eight. Six, eight, and he is batting um, left. And that is going to be a walk. So Elisea pulls off a walk. Alisea has been surprisingly good this game. He has grounded out 6-3, but then has a single and two walks. Other than that. John Valentin gets a 1-8, um, and he's batting against uh, Ossiano. So that is going to be a strikeout. Valentin with the K. Ossiano strikes out his second man, I think, or third. Third man. Troy O'Leary is up, 2-7. And that's going to be a ground ball double play to first base. 
So a two, four, one, two, four, one, something like that. Don't even care. I mean, my, I, my bra brain is mush right now with all these runs that have been scoring. Top of the ninth. We're in the top of the ninth here. Um, Wade Boggs against Joe Hudson. And that is going to be a 6-8. And 6-8 uh, is going to be a single. Wade Boggs with a single. Doesn't even need it. They don't even need it. And they got it. Ruben High Sierra is the batter. He gets a 5-8. He is going to be batting left. And that is going to be a single, or wait, a double one. It's going to be a single, double asterisk. So, again, they don't. the Yankees don't even need to be doing this. But they are. They're just doing it because they want to be the Yankees. Don Mattingly is up, and he gets a 2-9. Two 2-9 nine. Two nine against a righty, and that is going to be a fly ball right field B. So one out and a run scores. That's a sack fly. Hudson allows a run. Paul O'Neill gets a 3-4. Three, 3-4, four. Three, four, are you kidding me, is a home run. Two-run home run for Paul O'Neill. Which also drives in Sierra. That brings up Randy Velarde. 1-7 is going to be a ground ball second base, two away. That's two down. And Mike Stanley gets a 6-7. Six, 6-7 seven. Six, seven is going to be a ground ball second base X. Second baseman is a 3-E-20. That is an 18. 18 and 3 is an out. 4-3. But the Yankees get three more right there. So I'm going to count this up right now. It's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18 runs. The Yankees have 18 runs. The Red Sox are going to the bottom of the ninth here, needing a scant 14 runs. And uh, Ossiano is going to come out for New York. He will not pitch the ninth. So he goes uh, two innings. He allows one hit and no earned runs. And they will bring in Rick Honeycutt. Rick Honeycutt in 1995 was 5-1 with a 296 earned run average, all in relief, and uh, 46 innings of work. So we will put Honeycutt, write his name in there. And this was not the way we wanted Tim Wakefield's tribute game to come out, but he did pitch. He did get to do two big innings. <laughs> My three, he was basically an opener. Um, Mike Greenwell is the batter. And he gets a 3-7. Three, 3-7 seven. Three, seven against uh, Honeycutt, who is a lefty, actually, is the ground ball second base. So, four to three. Canseco is the batter. Canseco gets a two nine, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop. So, six to three, he's out. And that brings up Mo, Mo Vaughn. Got to go to Mo's. Four six, and that is going to be a fly ball to left field. F7, and that's your final. The final score is the Yankees, 18, the Boston Red Sox, 4. Um, 
the uh, Red Sox had 10 hits, the Yankees had 11, wait, 11, 13, 15, 18 hits. So, yeah, not the good, not the uh, kind of game you would have wanted for Mr. Wakefield, but we got his tribute game in, and uh, yeah, it could have gone better for the Red Sox for sure. Final score, 1995 Yankees 18, 1995 Red Sox 4. And that'll be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.